Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here to give you guys my WWE NXT review for Boxing Day of 2018, which is December 26, 2018. And I'm just going to get right into the episode. Uh, we had Percy Watson, Mo Ranallo, and Nigel McGuinness on commentary for this show. And the show opened up right up with um, an NXT Women's Championship number one contenders match. Io Shirai versus Mia Yim versus Bianca Belair versus Lacey Evans. And I thought this was a pretty good Fatal 4-Way match. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I liked how everybody was wrestling in this match. Um, Lacey Evans just goes onto the apron and has no interest in fighting everybody, which I think is pretty smart, you know, obviously, because... Um, She's kind of like that type of heel where that would take those type of smart fins and she doesn't have to take a lot of, you know, bumps because now she could just easily squeal her way into a victory. Um, so Mia Yim and Io Shirai work together to take out um, Bianca Belair and they throw her outside the ring. Um, and Mia Yim hits a really cool dive on her because I liked it because Mia Yim and um, Bianca Belair, like, in the beginning of the match, were fighting with each other, and Io Shirai, like, tried to beat with a roll-up, and that's what caused them to work together, um, and then Lacey Evans ambushes Io Shirai from behind, and when she goes to Irish whip her, um, she ends up, like, changing her momentum and just hitting this really, like, dangerous-looking dive right onto, uh, Bianca Belair. I actually thought, um... Io Shirai could have, like, broken her neck or something. I thought it looked really scary. Um, but she was fine. And then Mia Yim and Io Shirai worked together to take out Lacey Evans. They beat the crap out of her and had a lot of running attacks into the corner. But then Mia Yim fucks up and accidentally takes out um, Io Shirai with a big boot. So Lacey Evans dominates the matchup for a while by taking out both baby faces. Um, she hits... A really cool drop to hold on me on Io Shirai, like right through the legs of Mia Yim. And she hits a really cool Bronco Buster, which I never really was a fan of that move, but it still kind of looked cool. Um, and then Bianca Belair and e, um, Lacey Evans get into a fight because they both want to win the match. And I kind of like this because they were kind of unable to work together in a way because their egos were so big. But then eventually they kind of worked together because they realized that Mia Yim and Io Shirai were a bigger threat. Um, they try to go for a double superplex, but Io Shirai catches her. She drop toads Bianca Belair into the ropes. Well, she was supposed to go into the ropes, but I think this was messed up because she went landed face first on the mat, so she had to kind of go under the ropes, but I still thought it looked good. And she hits the Tiger Fane kicked on her through the ropes, or the 619. And a springboard drop, ki uh, missile drop kick. Um, Mia Yim hit her, um, a lot of really cool moves, and eventually Lacey Evans um, hits the woman's. Well, Io Shirai hits a missile drop kick, and Bianca Belair lays out Io Shirai with a spear. Lacey Evans lays out Bianca uh, Mia Yim with the woman's right, um, and then. Um, she gets laid out with the moonsault, um, by Io Shirai, and then Bianca Belair uses her hair whip, her, her ponytail, and whips, um, Io Shirai and hits a reverse powerbomb out of the ring, and then she hits the, I forget what it's called, but it's the, um, reverse, like, it's pretty much a burning hammer right onto, um, Lacey Evans for the win, and Bianca Belair actually got the victory here, and she's the number one contender for the NXT Women's Championship, which I'm very happy about. You know, I um, had kind of two picks in this match. I had one that I wanted to win, but I had one that I thought was going to win, so I went the one, with the one that I thought was going to win because sometimes you go with your mind instead of your desires. Because um, I thought Io Shirai was going to win because she was kind of already intertwined into the NXT Women's Championship picture. But I wanted Bianca Belair to win because I thought that was a better option. And I just really have enjoyed Bianca Belair. And they went there with the pick that I wanted. I, so I kind of I like this a lot. Um, I think Bianca Belair deserves the championship match. She's probably not going to win the championship at NXT TakeOver Phoenix. But I think it's really cool that she's getting a match. Um, and this could end up turning her face in the end too. Um, where she can just get so over in that match. And then 
obviously end up turning face. I, I think it's awesome she's getting an NXT Women's Championship opportunity. So I think that's great. And obviously I think it made sense for Lacey Evans to eat the fall since she's being called up to the main roster fairly soon anyways. Um, I, th I think it made sense for her to eat the fall. And then um, we had Mitch Tavarana versus Jackson Riker with Stephen Cutler with Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake inside. Um, he got squashed, absolutely destroyed, one-handed spine buster, and then he gets hit with a power bomb and like a wicked power bomb that looked awesome for the win. Um, they continue to push the Forgotten Sons. They have some big plans, I think, for Jackson Riker, but I just don't know what those plans are. But I thought this was a nice enhancement talent um, match for him. And then um, we had a video package for the Velveteen Dream, um, where we talked about how, you know, pretty much his career in NXT, how in 2017 he said that he, um, he would be someone that's captivated and that he would never forget. And he talks about how he's been praised by legends um, and how he's had unforgettable moments in 2018. And in 2019, it's going to be Dream Over. I think Velveteen Dream is going to be a huge star in NXT. Um, if he can, you know, stay obviously happy with management. Um, and then, you know, because obviously all these call-ups are happening, and then he sent out a tweet um, asking where his call-up was, and he was forced to take down those tweets, so I hear he's in some backstage heat, which I hope it isn't the case, but um, whatever. And then Tommaso Ciampa does a promo, and he talks about how Somebody has been listening and following his lead. He's not just a guy talking to a cam camera, just talking to a wall. He talks about how Johnny Gargano is following his lead because um, Johnny Gargano following his lead allowed him to pick up a victory in the Steel Cage match um, on the previous episode of NXT. And he says that, um, that this should entitle him to get a championship match but he can't have an NXT championship match because um, Tommaso Ciampa currently has a number one contender so he thinks that Johnny Gargano should get a chance at the NXT North American Championship and you know Tommaso Ciampa talks about how this is what we've talked about Johnny how when we were not signed anywhere um living in hotel rooms, you know, um, we talked about DIY taking over NXT, and this is the opportunity for that to happen, uh, where we, I can hold a championship, and you can hold the North American Championship at NXT TakeOver Phoenix, and I think this was an awesome promo, and I really hope that that does happen um, at NXT TakeOver Phoenix, where Tommaso Ciampa leaves with the NXT title, and Johnny Gargano leaves with the NXT North American Championship, really excited to see what happens with this. Then we had uh, the main event, which I thought was a really good match. It was um, the NXT Tag Team Championship match. NXT Tag Team Champions Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly versus Heavy Machinery. I thought this was a really good um, NXT Tag Team Championship match. Um, you know, Heavy Machinery just really started out like a powerhouse tag team, just utilizing the power to completely... Just absolutely destroy uh, the NXT Tag Team Champions. But then eventually, um, you know, Strong and O'Reilly work over the legs of Tucker Knight. Um, and behind the referee's back, Roderick Strong hits a back suplex right under the apron. Which kind of was messed up a little bit because Roderick Strong just, I don't think, could hold Tucker Knight up for as long as he did. So he ended up just completely falling off the apron. It was a pretty scary spot. And they dominate... Tucker Knight for a long ass time. They hit, you know, a few running attacks and stuff into the corner. And then eventually, uh, Otis Dozovic gets the hot tag and he goes off on, you know, Strong and O'Reilly. He hits the Caterpillar elbow drop on, I believe, Kyle O'Reilly. Um, but then eventually, uh, they go for the Compactor, um, but Undisputed Era prevent it from happening. And, Pretty much, um, you know, 
they try to um, Taco Knight tries to go for the moon salt, but they it get they gets reversed. So he tags in Otis Dojovic. Um, Otis Dojovic tries to win with a wicked power bomb, but he doesn't get the victory. And he goes for the splash, misses, and he takes a crap load of moves from this Peter era, the you know high strike kicks. But eventually, uh, they're unable to. Um, he eventually loses to high and low, and. Strong and O'Reilly retained the NXT Tag Team Championships. And what I thought was a really good match. They had, you know, a really good NXT Tag Team title match. I thought it was nice that Heavy Machinery um, got to have one final NXT Tag Team title match before they left NXT. And I thought they put over, you know, Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly on the way out. And afterwards, Undisputed Air was up on the stage celebrating. Um, and that was that. Um, then on the post-show... They show, uh, which was hosted by Alicia Taylor. They showed at a live event in December 8th um, of the Velveteen Dream, you know, cutting a promo on uh, Tommaso Ciampa in Minnesota, in Minnesota, talking about how it's going to be dream over for him and, you know, shows a little bit of an NXT t- championship match, mainly just the introductions between Tommaso Ciampa and the Velveteen Dream because I think they're just going to do those matches at the house shows for a few weeks. Um... NXT, I don't know if it's already came here, but it's rumored to be coming here um, in March. No, not, not in March, in Lowell, Massachusetts, but I'm obviously I'm not there right now. But um, I think it's already happened, though, and I don't think I'm going to be able to go to the show anyways because um, I just won't be able to. But uh, this was this episode of NXT. You could kind of feel like they didn't really air that much because it was the day after Christmas. Uh, they probably didn't think that a lot of people would be thinking about NXT, which I thought was a smart decision. But I still thought this ended up being... I'm just going to be generous. I mean, I still enjoyed the episode, but I can't really say it's a really good episode. I want to... Uh, actually, I still really... I'm also a little tired, too, so it kind of probably affected it. But you know what? I am going to say it was a really good episode because I really did enjoy this episode of NXT. I thought we had a really good NXT Tag Team Championship match. I thought we had a good women's four-way match. I liked the way they built up Jackson Riker. Um, I liked Tommaso Ciampa's promo on the show and the Velveteen Dreams video package. So I'm going to give this episode a B. I thought it was really good. And that's pretty much um, the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please make sure you guys like, comment, and share this video so people will watch it. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel for more content and click on the bell. So that way every time I upload a video, you guys will get the notifications for it. And make sure you guys do the same thing for my CM Brothers and no one will talk any of the YouTube channels. And that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.